Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. So today I want to look at a painting by Degas called The Dancing Examination. And before I start analyzing this painting, though, I want to mention to those that are new to my website, I like to do this once in a while, that I mainly teach the harmonic armature. I have a lot of information on dynamic symmetry, but moving forward, I find the harmonic armature much easier to learn. And this includes anybody that does drawings, paintings, or if you're into photography, it's a universal grid. It's a one grid approach. It is a grid made up of 14 diagonal lines. And from there, you can create an infinite amount of variety. And my teachings are based on the book, the Painter's Secret Geometry by Charles Boulot and Juliet Aristides' book, Classical Painting Atelier. She mentions the harmonic armature in Chapter 2. If you haven't bought the book, check it out. It's definitely worth the money. Like All her books are fantastic. If you're going to buy Charles Boulot's book, though, I, I only recommend that book for the advanced student. It's a difficult read, and it's difficult to understand. Start with Classical Painting Atelier. Watch some of my videos. I have a ton of videos on this. I just released a user's guide that specifically talks about the harmonic armature. I used to teach a lot of dynamic symmetry stuff. I don't teach it anymore. I'm going to be writing a new user's guide for specifically dynamic symmetry, but most of my video lectures are going to be on the harmonic armature because you can analyze all work, including dynamic symmetry art, using the harmonic armature. All right, so let me point out a few things about this painting. The first thing I notice is you have a dominant vertical right here. And let me just thicken this line up a little bit. There you go. You have some diagonal lines that I think are strong here as well. You have this one going here. Then of course you have this diagonal line where all the attention is going because you have gazing direction going here. So the eye is being drive to this point. But one thing I want to stress too is that even though you have four subjects, let me just eliminate these. They're separated visually because you have this figure here doing a really lousy job of surrounding that. That didn't work. But anyway, you have this figure here on the edge of the frame, and then you have these three here that are focused in on this direction. The gazing direction, as I said, was here. And then it's going down here. But you could group these three figures together, even though there's an overlap, because this figure is isolated. Her back is turned to the group. She's looking down. And her gazing direction is also driving that strong vertical line. So that's what I wanted to point out before I drop the harmonic armature. Let me change this back to white. and. I'll thin up this line, make it dashed. Let's see if that works. There you go. All right, let me get started. I like to mention the direction I'm going with this website for those that are new. If I sound repetitive, I apologize for that. But I get a lot of new artists and photographers on my website every day. So I just want to occasionally stress the fact and not only that because we're coming up on a new year I've made some drastic changes to what I'm doing it's been it's been an interesting three or four years for me because getting this information across is incredibly difficult and like I said it started with dynamic symmetry but the problem with dynamic symmetry it's really difficult to teach online and because you're using a group of various root rectangles you're not it's hard it's very specific for example you can't just go to AC Moore and grab a canvas off the shelf and start using dynamic symmetry because dynamic symmetry is dealing with specific size rectangles and they're called root rectangles whereas with the harmonic armature it doesn't matter the size of the rectangle that you're designing in and the other problem with the with dynamic symmetry 
with photography is most art most photographers are shooting in a one five format and you can't effectively apply dynamic symmetry to that format there's a technique called overlapping root fours in a one five and it's way too complex to even apply in photography so if you're a photographer and you're shooting in a one five format Practically applying dynamic symmetry is almost impossible. So I'm not even going to teach that anymore. If you're into photography, use the harmonic armature to analyze your photographs. It's much more universal and it's more effective. As I'm drawing this grid out, you can see a lot of these diagonal lines that I highlighted in blue come about. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me change this back to thicken the line and I'll change the color back to blue. Let me try that again. All right. Sometimes this application doesn't like to cooperate. All right, that's strong. Okay, so what you have going on here is you have a strong diagonal line here and one way the artist can use the harmonic armature they can place their figures along diagonal lines and specific elements for example you have this diagonal line here it's a strong one and it's following this direction down with this leg here as I had mentioned before you have that vertical here but notice you have a diagonal line here in this girl's arm right here and it's landing on that harmonic armature diagonal line you have that gazing direction I was talking about right here. Also notice here that you have this diagonal line being played out and it's running down this element right here with the girl in her dress and it comes all the way down to this point. So it's enhancing this direction here in the girl's leg at that point. You also have a diagonal line right here, and that can be derived by anchoring at this corner here and running it through this series of two diagonal lines. Wherever you have two or more diagonal lines intersect, you can drive lines through them horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. So you can see this diagonal line being played out with the arch in the back. You also have that vertical right here, which runs along this leg there. And I'll bring this up to this point here because it also locks this face in the position. That's called a coincidence. Things line up in paintings that are highly designed. They're not randomly placing these elements. One thing I want to stress today, if you are new to this website, design's not intuitive. It's not a thing. A highly trained artist is not going to go to the canvas and place elements based on their feelings. It does not work, period. It is a myth of the 20th century. It's not a thing. If you want to create great art and you're drawing and painting, you have to understand this armature and you have to understand how to use it. Memorize these lines. It's not hard. And start out simple. Start with a few lines. That's what Aristides recommends in her book, Classical Painting Atelier. If you're familiar with the rule of thirds, the rule of thirds is derived from this grid. So something to keep in mind if you're new to my website. You also have a vertical here where these diagonal lines intersect and notice how it runs down this leg. But also notice here in the foot, the angle of the foot, how it's outlining, how it's tracing the harmonic armature diagonal lines. This stuff is not random. You have a horizontal line here that locks in the bottom of the dress. You also have a vertical right here, which locks in this part of the leg as well. And you have a horizontal line right there. This is all I'm going to draw today, but it's important to point these things out. Also notice with this diagonal line, when I bring this all the way down, it lines up with this girl's gazing direction. And this diagonal line is also being played out. Boy, this application is not cooperating today. 
but you have this going on as well. Degas is using gazing direction and the diagonal lines to create a very powerful design. And like I said, there's a few ways you can use the harmonic armature. You can drive horizontal and vertical lines to lock subjects into place. You can place your figures along the diagonal lines. You also have, just to point out, you have a vertical here, and then you have, an, and you have another one here. It's locking this leg into place. So not only is Degas using the diagonal line strongly, but he's also locking elements into place using this armature. If I drop a horizontal line here, where this series of diagonal lines meet, it locks this position with this girl. So, like I said, he's locking things into place, and he's using the diagonal lines. I hope this makes sense. Let me, before I end this, uh, let me eliminate the armature just to make it a little bit easier to see some of these lines. And of course, that's not all the divisions, but in order to learn, you have to make this legible. And this is some of the lines. I hope this makes sense. Thanks for joining me today. Appreciate it, as always.